All right, today we're going to talk about one of those must-do mods on a Fox Body Mustang if you plan on tracking. It's kind of probably a must-do mod on any Mustang. Fox, SN, New Edge. I'm pretty sure the S550 chassis and probably the S197 chassis already have this from the factory in some method. But today we're talking about boxing in the radiator. So obviously this is a little different than a factory Mustang. Most radiators are flat. Uh, what we're doing here is, and I've ran it for years with just cardboard, card, not card, cardboard. Um, this is corrugated two-piece signboard. And I've always just taped it and, you know, little L brackets here and there. But all you're doing is your sealing the front all the incoming air actually gets forced through the fins of the radiator so you're increasing your cooling efficiency because there's no loss of air you're controlling the airflow through the front of the car into your coolers your oil cooler your power steering cooler your radiator so this is like I said a must-do mod for definitely for a Fox like I said um, new newer Mustangs probably already have this done so I've done it like I said for years with corrugated signboard you can get this at Staples for two three bucks four bucks um, you know people use signboards for signs in front of their house and tag sales and stuff I mean you could probably find it honestly for free so I got the front end off because I'm gonna have to do some trimming and some adjusting but what I'm talking about here is again forcing that air through the radiator so I actually <clears throat> tape I tape this these side pieces up because I don't need the air slippage to go to the left and to the right of the radiator I want it coming in through the chin and getting forced through the radiator and I'll explain something else in detail in a minute here but as you can see that this is a GT nose GT front bumper so we got some area so that piece of aluminum that comes out I usually slide it right in this pocket so it doesn't have to be perfect you know it could have some adjustability but as long as it sits in this pocket no so now the airflow comes in through here right through the radiator and this is why I tape up these um, you know, this is like decorative. I don't even know what this is called, but you want to funnel that air through your radiator. So let me backtrack. I've converted this car to a front feeder. Foxes by default by the factory are considered and called bottom feeders. So if you look on a Fox body, stock Fox body, there is, under your radiator support, there's like a three inch piece of plastic. And so what that does is as you're driving, it scoops up air from underneath the car and it forces it up through the radiator. Obviously the radiator is flat, but that air comes in from the bottom and goes up through the radiator and then it gets messy all around the engine bay, it goes below the car, above the car, very messy. It's okay for a street car. When you start racing and getting into the competitive stuff, it's not okay. That plastic air dam underneath the radiator support actually causes lift at like 100 miles an hour. So again, the Fox body is a bottom feeder. If you're going to continue to keep it a bottom feeder with that big air dam underneath the radiator support, you need to keep the bottom open so you get that fresh air into the radiator. You can box the sides and you can box the top. You gotta leave the bottom open. If you convert to a front feeder like my car is, I get all the airflow from the chin. Years ago, I used to run a 93 Cobra grill insert. So you can cut this out and now you get some more airflow through the front. I don't need it. I don't have an overheating issue. The car gets plenty of airflow. Um, a lot of guys, you know, you'll see do like two or three inch hole saws. They port this to get more airflow. You can even port this to get more airflow. You know, race car stuff, easy, whatever you want. There's also, like I said, the 93 Cobra grill. On the LX bumper cover, 
late model resto sells that insert that's like a nice sleeve it gets rid of the grill and the ford emblem it smooths up you'll get more airflow my radiator is so uh tilted forward it's so low opening up this top part would do nothing for me the air would go right over the radiator and just smack into the engine that does nothing so i don't need it um again this is a front feeder so all the air comes in through here so if you convert your fox to a front feeder then you can bottom in the bottom or box in the bottom obviously the sides and the top the sides and the top you always want to do regardless the bottom is the difference between front feeder and bottom feeder depending on your application um, years ago when i street drove the car i swore i noticed when i took that stock air dam off the bottom of the radiator support i swear at you know above highway speeds the front felt more planted so the goal when you start getting into more track stuff is it's airflow right i don't run any cooling fans i don't need them um in the paddock in the pit lane if she starts running hot i just shut it off wait until you know we go out green flag cool as soon as i get out of pit lane there's so much airflow coming in and coming out of the coolers the temperature is perfect so again for race car stuff track applications it's about airflow uh, on a street car, everyone with cooling fans has big shrouds. Shrouds are great for the cooling fan on a street car because when you mount a fan, it's only going to pull airflow from wherever that fan's mounted. Where if you mount a fan with a shroud, that shroud seals the back of the radiator. And now when that fan turns on, it pulls all of the hot air from the entire radiator, decreasing your water temp. However, the shrouds cause restriction at high mile an hour. So again, depending on your application, you so I've seen people put in flap doors on the shrouds. I've seen people port just a couple hole saws in shrouds. I actually ran no shroud for the longest time. I had an electric fan mounted to the radiator. I've ran it in a push style. I've ran it in a pull style. I've actually noticed it runs better as a pusher. Then as I started getting more competitive uh, motorsport stuff, I realized I had, you know, I ran a, a power steering cooler and an oil cooler, so I didn't have space on the front of the radiator to run the fan, so then I mounted it as a puller on the back. Now, like I said, I don't even run fans. The, 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 what you want to do here, the goal here is airflow. So you got your boxing in the front like I am, increasing the airflow through the front coolers, and then you start to add some hood vents, and now you're going to increase the airflow coming out of the hood. Bear with me. Uh, this is all track spec hood vents. I was just experimenting, but you know, you're adding louvers, you're adding vents. These, as you drive, as you gain mile an hour, the airflow over the car will actually start to extract and suck the hot air from your radiator, from the coolers, and from the engine bay. So, Again, it's about airflow. Airflow coming in, controlled through all the coolers, and airflow coming out. This is gonna be the idea, or ideal uh, track car prep. Um, what I would like to do with this, and why this is open, is you see on the pro cars, the GT3, GT4 cars, they actually have the back of the coolers ducted right out of the hood. So there's no messy air going around the engine, going under the engine going on top of the engine causing lift on the back of the hood which I've seen at Road Atlanta and I feel I feel it in the wheels uh, corner you know you understeer when you start to get lift I can see the hood back here there's actually air getting trapped I'm getting a ton of air out of the vents but I'm also getting some air trapped over here which lifts the hood and I can see it through the windshield and like I said at 145 or 150 miles an hour if I'm going into a slight corner, I can feel that I'm losing the front grip that I have at 90, let's say. So there's a lot of stuff to take into consideration with airflow, with aerodynamics, and cooling. Um, when you duct the back of the radiator and you get that air to come in and come out, it also increases downforce. So there's a lot, again, it's a can of worms, and I don't know how crazy you want to go, but I wanted to make a quick video about boxing in the front of the radiator. Um, it doesn't take much. I ran literally for years, signboard, cardboard, gorilla tape, very simple stuff. Again, it's it's when you tuck it in behind the bumper cover, 
Um, it all kind of works together. I wish I had a stock Fox here to show you. Uh, you know, if this was like your stock um, panel on the front end, I literally, you know, maybe a piece of ABS plastic, some Gorilla Tape just to seal the top of the radiator. The sides of the radiator were super simple. I have a ton of pictures of this setup on Instagram, on my Instagram profile. You're going to have to scroll back to like 2017, 2018 because it was a while ago. But again, you know, you're just sealing the top, you're sealing the sides, and if you convert to a front feeder like this, you'll seal the bottom. And this is going to greatly reduce water temp.